So what's my view? Well, the problem is that women and people of color get less funding. That's what I think. And the solution is, is a, a diverse team, a focus and systematic strategy we can talk about. I think the time is now because there are undervalued opportunities out there and they're growing. I've had discussions with some of my colleagues about this. Some people agree. A lot of people don't agree. If you don't need this is one of the... Uh, the uh, objections that I get that, you know, let capitalism work and it'll do its magic. And, you know, you, 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 these uh, good deals will float up and we will find them. I don't agree with that. I think there's selection bias because I'm biased myself. Uh, you know, prejudice is a nice shorthand way of making sense with a lot of information. And, you, you know, we all like we're tribal, I think. So um, we like people that like us, that, that look like us, that think like us, and maybe they're in our own neighborhoods. Uh, and we feel more comfortable uh, with that kind of scenario. Whereas taking somebody from Nigeria, somebody from Mexico, somebody from Estonia, it's a little different. So we have to sort of be more broad-minded. Um, there is a big opportunity out there in terms of funding. You can see... VC funding uh, peaked in 2021, came down significantly in 2022, but the percentage that goes to women, black, and Latino founders has been very small, you know, compared to the general population. So it's about 4%. Some folks argue that it's even lower. It's like 2%. Uh, and there are ways to, to show that, but I just wanted to show you that. Venture capital is not diverse. It just isn't diverse, and in my view. And some of these charts and you know the research that that uh, we've done shows that that it, it's it, in terms of uh, diversity is still lacking. It's getting better, uh, no question about that. But uh, it it requires uh, more attention. Now this goes back to one of the present one of the presenters at the beginning of the uh, of the morning, which talked about deal deal flow. You know where does deal flow come from? Well, as you can see, it comes from former colleagues, other investors, existing companies, and all of that is within the network, within whatever network you're in. That's where you're going to find a lot of deal flow. One of the things that we tried to do here in New York Angels is expand that deal flow by going not only accessing a lot of uh, accelerators, incubators, and really reaching out uh, to a lot of folks to get in early. Sometimes you have a fear that we're not seeing all of the really great deals. I think uh, Maury did a, did a pitch showing that in his area, uh, we are getting to see those deals. But we always are afraid that we're missing out, the fear of missing out. It's always out there. And uh, I believe that we just keep, we need to just keep expanding the, um, the deal flow and uh, the opportunities to find those, those pearls in places where a lot of venture capitalists don't go because it, it takes time. Uh, as we heard in the, in the morning presentation, uh, one of the, the sort of the, the superpowers that uh, uh, Ventures uh, showed was that they, they went in early, they talked to uh, customers and all of that. You know, and that's hard to do because, um, you know, those are the crown jewels of, of early stage companies. But it's hard to do, it's time consuming. We see it here in terms of uh, New York Angels. You know, I've, you know I've, sometimes I've posted a lot and haven't let a deal and haven't really participated. And it takes that kind of effort to get great returns. You have to participate, you have to get involved, and you have to do your work. There's no shortcut to our hard work. So the point of this is that there is a network that already exists. We tend to stay within the network. And in fact, you know, even inbound cold emails are very small, but the other ones on outbound contact with entrepreneurs, that's kind of still within the network. So we just need to expand it and make it uh, make the funnel bigger. There's another misconception out there that black and Latino entrepreneurs are not in science. You know, they're, they're just not around. They're not available. They're not in there. 
And that's a misconception because after 30 to 40 years of these elite universities, whether it's Stanford or Harvard or whatever you want to call it, they have been focusing on accepting uh, minorities and accepting uh, women. And you have 30 or 40 years, and that has produced a lot of people out there with these kinds of degrees, even though that it's 20% of those STEM uh, degrees are for uh, Black and Latinos, uh, the population is 33%. There's about 20%, 62 million Hispanics, and uh, about 13% uh, Black. So it's about you know, 33%. So it's still underrepresented under, uh, there, but it's coming up, and 20% of the total is significant.